Uh, it begins from very, very low level of the microcosmos. It is in the so-called Planck scale that is in the order of uh, 10 at minus uh, 34 from the uh, 10 of, at power minus 34 of the meter. It is extremely low. And okay. then the, based on the only two fundamental particles and based on the one law that is I call supergravitation and this law is distinguished by the Newton's law of this fundamental particles start to build structure only uh, based on this uh, uh, law and they become uh, this a three-dimensional structure that becomes more complex, more complex, more complex until they reach to the structure of the elementary particles that build the atomic nuclei. But in the same sub-structure uh, of the elementary particles uh, also build the structure of the uh, space, or you may call it uh, ether, I, make, I call it cosmic lattice, because it is not a gas, it is not something chaotic, it is very, very organized structure with very specific property, and this structure explains the quantum mechanics, it explains the, the relativity, special relativity, general relativity, but it gives a different vision about the microcosmos and even about the universe. And because this structure, when you become familiar with this structure, you see that this structure propagates the light and you see why the speed of light is exactly constant. Also, we see that this structure propagates not only, not only the, the light, it propagates the Newtonian gravitation. And this is the, ba the very fundamental issue because uh, I found the connection between the electromagnetic waves from one side and the, and the gravitation, Newtonian gravitation. And this later lead me to vision that it is possible to control the, the gravitation. Okay. Um, what, uh, what do other scientists right now think when you presented your papers and your books out there with your theory? What, what response have you had on that? Uh, from one side, uh, because uh, my theory, it is very detailed presented is in my uh, major book, and this book is uh, 600 pages. But th this book, in fact, is a reference in the Journal of Physics of Canada, official book review exists. What's, the name, of what's the name of that book? The book is Basic Structures of Matter, Supergravitation Unified Theory. Theory. Okay, and, carry on. Uh, and this uh, book, uh, uh, in fact, uh, this book was initially published in 2001. In 2002, I ar archived this book in the Canadian, in the National Canadian Library. And then follow some publication, initially in the Physics SA Journal, that is uh, devoted to fundamental question in physics. Then I uh, have a presentation in a number of international conferences, uh, initially in 2005 in one conference organized by NASA in Huntsville, Alabama. Then another conference, I have been uh, in Russia in uh, 2006. There was a big interest about this. Even the Russian Academy took my book and put in, uh, in uh, the Russian, the Russian catalog in the Russian Academy of Sciences. And I have been a number of, of conferences in the United States. Two conferences in the Society for Scientific Exploration and one conference in the Natural Philosophy Alliance the last year. So the information is getting out there. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, the, the information is exposed. But how, how, how is, has, has the, the response been from uh, other uh, scientists like yourself? Like, what, what have they said to you privately or, you know? Uh, in fact, uh, if you speak about the theory, the theory itself is very difficult to, to be accepted uh, uh, because uh, unless it is only theoretical, 
because uh, my theory is uh, completely original, but uh, it starts from a new vision about the microcosmos and later lead to the universe. So it is uh, something that uh, many that, uh, for example, that develop some kind of theory, they, for them they look something different and something uh, uh, not uh, acceptable because uh, it leads to the different vision. My vision about the elementary particles and the, uh, I have a, a atomic nuclear structures. My vision also about the universe is different and uh, the facts that are uh, difficult to accept. But my vision about the universe is completely different. There is not a big bang, there is not uh, uh, expanding of the universe. Many different things. Okay. So, so you remove the in your in your theoretical research, you remove the the Big Bang theory, and the expansion of the universe theory. That that can't go over very well with traditional scientists. Yeah, the, in fact, I didn't remove. I just suggest uh, the explanation, uh, but uh, the explanation because it is different. It is not easily said, but by the way, there is so much problems in the Big Bang Theory that even uh, four years ago they established uh, uh, international conferences every two years, uh, crisis of, in cosmology. And there has been two or three such conferences so far. And even uh, in the... Crisis? Yeah. Crisis? Cri crisis in cosmology. Okay. Because the Big Bang Theory doesn't uh, contemplate with the results that uh, uh, later uh, provided. It appears some... Uh, Absurd. And does this have to do with the redshift? The redshift is one thing that was accepted. The main thing is that uh, in, the, in the Big Bang theory, because they accepted that the space is pure empty, and my theory is not empty, it is uh, filled with this uh, cosmic lattice, they say because it is pure empty, it is homogeneous. There is no difference in space in our galaxy, in the next galaxy, and so on. So, uh, then uh, what we see as a redshift, it's a Doppler shift. But from my theory, it appears different because the space is in different galaxy, a little bit different, and every galaxy has its own, uh, own cycle, own evolution. Then appears that the, the light propagating through many university when passing from one galaxy to another galaxy get a little bit redshift, loss of energy. And this gives illusion that the universe is expanding. And this is a but the effect is uh, very big, and that is difficult to, to accept. Ah, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. So how is it that the, the, the galaxies begin and then go through a life cycle and then die out? Yeah, or what's yeah, the... it, yeah it appears uh, to, it, it has a life cycle. And what we have, the galaxy has a phase of active life that we see. And um, there is a hidden life that we don't see. In the active life, the galaxy has, uh, individual galaxy, this has a cosmic lattice. And all the light, all the automated waves propagate through this cosmic lattice, so we see this lattice. But uh, there is a hidden cycle when the whole galaxy, including the lattice, collapse. And it undergoes the, uh, the to the hidden phases of recycling of the uh, all matter, including to the elementary particle, this recycling process becomes a process of the new uh, crystallization of the new particle, and then explosion, and then appears a new galaxy. And that's why every individual galaxy has a super uh, super heavy nucleus in the uh, in the in, in the, the center. center. Black the center hole. that they say black hole. In fact, it is a, a matter of super, super, super dense matter, where in fact is the fabric that this happens. And so also, there is a many, many observations that uh, confirm this. Uh, for example, there is a so-called uh, uh, cluster, uh, global clusters, thousand and thousand uh, uh, stars are compact very closely. And if this goes global cluster, clusters, it appears that there is some stars about 20 billion years old. But the, they say that the, the universe is about 12 billion. How it could happen? It happened because these uh, global clusters are uh, a remnant from the previous galactic life that escaped this uh, 
collapsing, and after that they become integrated in the new galaxy, because, but they have some difference, and that, that they become so different, very different than other. Oh, okay. But this is well, well, just one, there is uh, many other things. Okay, uh, so in, um, in, in your theory right now, um, is the universe infinite, or what's, yeah. what's your view? Yeah, according to my theory, the universe is really infinite. Uh, but what does say infinite? It, it is uh, this that it is uh, contains of uh, maybe billions of galaxies. Um, our more powerful telescope maybe didn't reach the uh, did, didn't reach to the same level, but they don't see what is beyond. But uh, but from the other side. Uh, it could not be infinite because it is uh, this uh, super dense matter that is in the very bottom level of the matter organization, I say. Uh, it perhaps is a constant, but it is a huge. And uh, the, But the main difference in my theory is that uh, there is not, uh, I don't envision a big bang, an expanding universe, but I envision local banks for every galaxy. So there is a bank when the galaxy collapses, and there is a bank when the ga new galaxy is born. And this, uh, but this uh, age of the galaxy is perhaps maybe from 20 to, to 15 or 20 billion years. So it is pretty large. But there is one effect that is detectable. It, they call it uh, gamma rays burst. This is uh, the most powerful event that uh, the scientists uh, uh, try to figure out what is it. I think this event in fact is the signature of either a, a new galaxy or collapsed galaxy. Okay, I see that. I, I, I can see where that comes from. So, if there wasn't a big bang where the the infinite amount of space was condensed into a small point and then expanded outwards, how did the universe begin or did it begin? Is there a beginning? Uh, it is much far beyond uh, our <laughs> question because uh, if the universe is not expanding but static, you, we always see something to start from something initial right right, right. but uh, it's difficult to say but uh, it is uh, absolutely i am i don't agree and absolutely we uh, not logical the whole universe to st start from a point and even they say mathematical point it is unbelievable right it, it's a theory isn't it it's just a yeah it's yeah, it's a, a theory, and this is theory that we could never go and to verify. Even you could not go to to see to other galaxy, are they uh, move away or uh, or stay? Okay, be forever. Right, right, yeah. right. So that it is a it's a difficult thing, isn't it? And we're we're still working on that. I have a quick question: uh, How is quantum mechanics related? to the theory of relativity on one side and on uh, and classical mechanics on the other. How does that work? In fact, there is a big unknown problem in physics that there is not interconnection between the quantum mechanics from one side, the classical physics from the other side, and the cosmology and to the relativity. But from my theory, this connection exists. And why? Because my theory explains uh, the quantum mechanics, the quantum mechanical features by the classical way. Usually they, the, the scholars say this is impossible. And they say quantum mechanics uh, contradicts to the law of physics. No, to the, sorry, they contradicts to the law of, uh, to, to the logic to the human logic, but in fact, I am not agree with this. If something contradicts to the law of, phys uh, law of uh, logic, human logic, I think it is indication that something is not, uh, is not uh, observed uh, to the full understanding.